Okay, so Whitney, excited to chat with you about the new season of the show. Can you just tease what fans are going to be able to see happen this season? Yes. So obviously this is the first season of My Big Fat Fabulous Life that doesn't feature my mother. And that's, I think, a difficult thing, not only for us, obviously, but for people who watch. But I do just want to tell the viewers that they need to get excited and get prepared because you're going to see several sides of Glenn Thor that you've never seen before. He's gone through a complete rebrand. He's now called GT. And um, it has been amazing to watch him survive and thrive. And I cannot wait to share him uh, as well as our new family that we have um that we found so it's 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 amazing we lost mom but we gained a lot as well and then I know you just mentioned your dad um I saw in the trailer that he has a bucket list of things that he's going through this season <laughs> can you talk about some of the things yeah. that are on his bucket list and why this was an important thing for him to embark on yeah well for my brother and I it was really difficult obviously in the wake of my mom's death, um, to support my dad, who has been the rock of our family forever and never showed any vulnerability in any sense. And then to suddenly um, have him, you know, openly crying and saying, this is the one thing in my life I haven't been able to fix. And um, he said on more than one occasion, some pretty scary things like that he had no reason to live without my mother and things like that. So we shifted our focus to him um, and supporting him and uplifting him. And we thought that, um, you know, this time in his life, he, he didn't retire until six months before my mother died. Um, and he's done nothing but focus on his family and his, his work his whole life. So this is the first time he's ever had to really think about himself. And I think that was like a really uncomfortable thing for him. He like doesn't, doesn't know what to do with himself. I mean, right now he's in a parking lot with his briefcase taking a nap. Like this is how he lives. Like he just is like, he gets his briefcase and he goes out of the house and he goes to get his coffee and he does what he does. Um, so it was really amazing actually to be able to experience that role shift of now supporting my father and helping him think about things that he wanted to do in life so we came up with the idea of the bucket list it started off super geriatric actually um i won't spoil uh <laughs> what we started with because i didn't see that in the trailer but um it quickly got very exciting we went indoor skydiving we took a trip to switzerland with our newfound family and um he's really been living uh a good life, I think. Um, it's still, he's still very sad. I mean, he would tell you that he's, you know, a mess, but I've seen him definitely thrive and it's been really rewarding. And obviously I, I want to offer my condolences about your mom. I can't imagine how hard it is to go through something like that. And then also being on a TV show and I saw her funeral is going to be on this season. Why was that something that you wanted to share with viewers? Well, for us, um, we actually were not in production when my mom was dying. Um, so this was in December and we got a text from my executive producer asking if we wanted to film it. They, you know, need to get a crew together and all that. And I remember being in the hospital with my dad by my mom's bedside and I just kind of like showed him the phone and he read it and immediately nodded. Um, it was my father's decision, which my brother and I fully support. But he says, you know, that my mother was loved publicly and he wants her to be mourned publicly. Um, he wanted people to come to the funeral. It was open to the public. There's nothing he loves more than hearing people talk about how much they love my mother. And he likens it to, you know, Princess Diana and Queen of England. Like they had public funerals. Why wouldn't Babs? You know, she's an icon. Uh, and we totally support that. Um, and this wasn't on our mind, I think, when my dad made the decision, uh, because it was just a personal decision. But ultimately, also, I think it is really helpful for people to watch and um, that we can kind of be a mirror for people. I think what I love about My Big Fat Fabulous Life is that for me, it's always been about representation and things you don't necessarily usually see in the media. And um, that's what I tell myself to keep, <laughs> to keep myself going through it all. And I think to see this journey with my mother through her illness, she chose to be on camera last season, which was incredible. I thought she was amazing and so brave uh, and so wonderful. And it's, it's the realest thing. I mean, the feedback that we get, you know, I'm going through this with my family. Um, I've never seen anybody talk about this. So I think ultimately it's just going to be helpful for people. Although that isn't why we made the decision. I mean, if we had felt uncomfortable, we, we wouldn't have, but um, I think ultimately it's going to help a lot of people uh, even sort through their grief and give people uh, a way to, to mourn my mother the way that she deserves to be mourned.
And I saw when your mom had sadly passed away, there was an outpouring of love, I think from fans online and on social media, sharing their love and like how much they're going to miss her. What was it like seeing that reaction from fans? Well, I mean, I have all, I've always known that I always get that reaction from fans about how, how wonderful, not only my mother is, but my parents are. Um, it's not lost on me that like my mom is the star of the show, you know, uh, but I, it's not really about me. So, um, you know, it's not something that I, that was a surprise to me. And I see the way people react to her in public, but to get that amount of support, um, I remember thinking, I think it was like 50,000 comments or something. Um and I, and I pictured like 50,000 people, you know, and thinking like that many people t- saw this and took the time to, to say the, the nicest things. And um, it's incredible that my mother, something I hear all the time is that she was the mother that people never had um, and that she actually mothered people literally all over the world um, through a TV screen. And I think about her legacy and how amazing that is and how she will be remembered and how she affected so many people. And on her... Um, She's uh, in a mausoleum and on her marker, it says Babs Thor, America's mom. Um, She was just a gift to so many people. And we're like, just really, um, nothing makes us happier than to share that. I mean, we've we've had her our our whole lives. You know, we always knew how amazing she was. So um, the opportunity to share her is really wonderful. Yeah, I feel like it, it, it feels, I feel like it must feel special to be able to keep her memory alive in that way and keep her um, with you, like her memory on the show and like keep her there in in a way, you know. What I love is like, you know, so many of her one-liners and things are like people's inside jokes. And that's what I love to think about is like in 30 years, people are still going to be like, you know, saying something she said and like laughing about it and just, you know, giving people laughter and comfort and joy um, to me is really what this uh, show is about. It's a lot less about, you know, the drama or this or that or what's actually happening. I just think about when I get down or when I think about, do I want to do this? Or I think about families. Oh God, sorry. <laughs> families no, and no. Mothers and daughters, you know, sitting down and, and, and watching it and it being a vehicle for people to connect with each other and, that's so important to me. So we're just really, really lucky and really grateful. And, and to must, still be here, season 11. Happy. <laughs> and it must also feel so great being able to know that you have all these memories captured forever that you can go back and rewatch of your mom and all these special times. I feel like it's like a home video almost being able to look back at all the fun times you had with her. I wish we did have DVDs or if this was like back in the day we could put on a VHS because I get nervous because it's like, I have it, but like, where is it? Like it's in a cloud somewhere, you know? So I'm like, I need to figure out a way to like physically have it. <laughs> but um, yes, definitely. Uh, it's amazing. Cause I have my whole life with my mom and then I have a whole TV show with my mom and um, my mom. Yeah. My mom, my mom gave everything to me and she gave so much to the public and um, she was an amazing, amazing woman. And uh I know that she's going to live on, like you said, through through the hearts and the minds of of hundreds of th- millions of people, you know, and not many people get to say that. But that's what people want. Right. When somebody passes, you want to keep their memory alive. And i um, just really lucky because my mother is is all around us. <laughs> As much as fans have been like showering her with love with like memories, some didn't really understand the choice to um, film uh, the funeral. I personally, I feel like I understand that as somebody who's I've lost people in my family. I, I, that was something that would be something I would do if I had a TV show, like I would want to keep somebody's memory alive with fans. But um, why do you think some people had that reaction um, to seeing you um, filming the funeral? Um, well, to be honest, um, I think that a lot of the people that had that reaction are people who, um, hate me and want to criticize me and would have criticized me if I didn't show it. I think they, well, again, too, I can't even say I, it wasn't even my decision. It was my father's, you know? Um, but I'm not surprised because I get criticized over everything and um that's been the hardest part of doing reality tv is the thousands tens of thousands of people who devote their life to um hating me uh it's really sad uh for them but uh so i'm not surprised everything i do is criticized uh but i saw a lot of people saying something like you know oh it's just that you're doing it for money and i i keep thinking like 
I get paid the same amount. Like if I was paid more money for every trauma I went through, I would be a rich bitch. <laughs> like I would be living on an island alone, you know, if I if I made money according to the, the traumatic level of the events. Um, and just the idea, like I can handle a lot, you know, that's I think leveled at me, but it it, it gets to me when it starts to be about my family. Um or even sometimes if people like want to talk about my cats, I get like so upset. I'm like, my cats are healthy, you know? Oh um, so that, that was hard. And I think uh, the, the thought that we would be exploiting my mother and people said that even last season when she was on TV after she had her stroke. Um, and that was her choice. She had her mental faculties about her and she was performing like she always did. Um, no one is over here exploiting my mother. We would never my mother is the rock of our family. We have done nothing but love and support her and do what's best for her for our entire lives. And the suggestion of anything different is just heinous to me. Um, there is not an ounce of me that wonders if she would have been upset. She, she would have been upset if we didn't, uh, actually. And um, ultimately, too, like, if it, if it makes someone uncomfortable, the thing is, I don't think it makes people uncomfortable. I think people just want to criticize me, honestly. Um and these things are difficult. They're hard to talk about. And ultimately, just like everything we've done on the show for the past decade, it's going to be a mirror for people to see themselves in difficult situations. And I know it's going to help people. And we have absolutely no regrets. And I have to say, I know that you're bringing up people criticizing you. I love how you respond to trolls on social media with some with humor. I saw your recent dancing video responding to some comments that people had left on your posts. Um, what advice would you give to others who are dealing with that type of thing and getting those types of comments online? Honestly, I don't really, I don't know that I have advice because for me, the way that I deal with that typically is just to not be on the internet because I can't stand it. Um, it really hurts my mental health. Um, and not even because it's like, I'm taking things personally, but just because like, I don't want to know that people are so horrible. You know, I, I, when you become a public figure, you become privy to the worst sides of people. And I don't just mean the internet, like scary stuff happens to me. Like I've literally been stalked. I've literally been on a hit list. I've had the cop show up at my door because somebody said they were going to murder me. I mean, like, it's not, it's not fun and games, you know what I mean? And it's not uh, anything that is uh, desirable or anything like that. But recently I was like, you know what? I feel like being on the internet because there is so much positive there. So if I'm going to be on the internet, the only way that I can deal, I think is to have a voice. <laughs> and a lot of people will say, well, don't give me attention. But like, it's not about giving someone attention. It's also just about like my own personal autonomy and like, what what feels good for me like you know my feelings matter and if i want to clap back and get a million views on a video that was super easy and i didn't have to use my brain power to make let's do it you know like um that feels good to me that feels empowering to me right now now for most of the last decade it has not felt, i've just stayed off the internet um but i find myself kind of like wanting to connect to the good parts and the good people and the good support which is there it's just that you can't avoid the negative. So I think that's why a lot of people just check out completely. Um, and I'd like to be able to see the good stuff. So for now, it's clapback season. I was going to ask, I saw in the trailer that you're on dating apps this season. What has that experience been like? Horrible. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, not good. Uh There's a shift I've noticed. So now that I'm back on the apps and I'll be 40 next year, I'm like, why are... I forgot to set my like age parameters. Mm -hmm. Like, why are these 18 year olds? Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Like, no, but legit, like now I'm an older woman and that's what is happening. And I'm like, this is, excuse me, crazy. I don't know what to do with this, um, <laughs> which it's fine for fun. Not ideal for, you know, relationships. So um, my love life is now. Yeah. Like I say, my sex life is a non-existent, but my love life is two different things. Um, nothing fun to report in the in the love life area unfortunately <laughs> I had like one really awkward date uh that you'll see this season um it's it's hard out here it really is oh my gosh I have definitely heard that all my friends who are on dating apps have told me that it's bleak so <laughs> I abysmal <laughs> horrible oh um, I was also going to ask, really bad. what are you looking for in your next uh, romantic partner? If you were to have like, if you could like craft an ideal man, what are some things you're looking for? Oh, yeah. I just want a man who is um, kind and um, ambitious and grounding and 
Um, I mean, what everybody says, right? Like funny and da, 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 whatever. Um, but I think one other thing that I'm really looking for at this point in my life is like a protective man because yeah, I've been shouldering a lot by myself for a long time and it would feel really good to just feel like I have um, somebody to just feel very protected by. Um, but other than that, I mean, I don't have crazy standards. I just the the pool is bleak. Yeah. If you were to sum up this season of my big, fat, fabulous life in three words, what would those three words be? Mm, hopeful, surprising, and comforting. It's it's hopeful for the, for the future and for anyone who's lost someone. Um, it's surprising because, like I said, Glenn Thor is going, going through a, a new era. And I think it's comforting um, to all the people that, you know, watch before for my family and to feel comforted by them. I think you still definitely will.